I'm looking now across the river to where my faith will end inside. There's just a few more days to labor. Okay, in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, the Bible says this, Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 27. Well, if you got your Bible, that makes a difference, don't it? I like to hear those pages turn in the Word of God. It's a whole lot better to look at it 
than it is just to hear it. It's a wonderful thing to hear it, but it's a good thing to read it. The Bible says, Colossians 1, 27, to whom God would make known what is the riches of, his, of the glory, the riches of his glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Well, what in the world is it? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hey, that's a mystery. That's a riches of his glory right there, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of heaven. Turn to the book of John, John chapter 1, John chapter 1, verse number 11 through 13. The Bible says this, he came to his own. He came to his own people, the Jew, and his own received him not. They did not receive him. The nation as a whole did not receive Jesus. Now, there's people that received him. We know that. God has chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, heirs of the kingdom. And, of course, the hierarchy did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. Man, they became sons of God because they believed upon his name, because they received him as the Savior, as the Lord, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Father, it's a blessing to be here today. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good word of God. Thank you for your divine presence. We thank you that we have the privilege to come to God's house to worship. We thank you for the freedom we have in America. We pray for this great country. We pray for liberty to continue. We pray for freedom of religion to continue. We pray for the freedom of the word of God to go around the globe, to continue to bless and reach souls around this globe. So hasten the day of your coming. So Lord, help us today to preach and to give forth thy word with power and grace and glory in Jesus' holy name. We will thank you for it to the glory of God. Amen and amen. I want to preach to you today upon this thought. Christ is the answer. Christ is the answer. Well, I looked up that word answer to see what it meant, and of course you know what it means, but it means a solution to a problem. An answer is a solution to a problem. Everybody has problems. Everybody's looked for answers for different things. It also means something that is sufficient. Well, I want to tell you Jesus is a solution to your problem today. He's a solution to the problems of this world. This world has a lot of problems, you know that? And Jesus is the answer. He really is the answer. And then, of course, he's sufficient. He is sufficient for the needs of this world. He's sufficient for your need, whatever that need may be today. He's able, he's able, God is able, he's able, and I'm glad he is. Well, let me just give you a few things that I think he is the answer for. First of all, he's the answer for the search of your life. The search of your life. A lot of people are searching. They're looking for something. They're looking for the truth, you know. And the Bible said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If they'd look to Jesus, they'd get the answer for their search, wouldn't they? But so many people are searching other places. They're searching for everything else. I heard Brother Dobson interviewing the rabbi that wrote the Harbinger. Anybody know who he is? Have you ever read his book, The Harbinger? But anyway, he's a rabbi who got saved, but he said, he, you know, he went to the Jewish synagogue and he, he you know, listened to the priors, raised as a Jewish a boy, and of course, he said one day he got uh, disillusioned because he heard him praying and praying and he never saw an answer to his prayer. That's what Charles Finney said. He'd go to church and he said he'd hear him give all these prayer requests and they'd pray and pray and pray and no, now, no prayers ever answered. They, he, he said they'd like to pray me into infidelity. Well, that's about what they did to this Jew. And so he began to search. He began to search all kinds of religions, different religions of the world, and this, this way and that way that they teach all the ins and outs of different things that to teach today, nothing would satisfy. But finally, he began to read the Bible, and of course, somebody introduced him to Jesus. He found the answer. The answer is Jesus Christ. If you're searching today for the truth, if you're searching today for the meaning of your life, I want to tell you, you'll find it when you find Jesus Christ. They had this fellow the other day. He was doing all this hocus pocus. I, I, I was just halfway listening. Thank you, Brother Glenn. I was just halfway listening, and, uh, you know, he said he got up there, and he went through all this motion. Well, you, you do like this. You got a ball in your hand, and you throw that. And then they mash it down and do this and do that. And I thought, what in the world has that man accomplished all that hopeless pocus? That, that don't mean a thing to me, brother. And, you know, they talk about this meditation. They say, oh, I want you to sit down and close your eyes and meditate. Throw your mind out of gear, yeah. When you throw your mind out of gear, the devil gets in there, don't he? The Bible said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seeth in the seed that is scorn of But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. 
meditates in the Word of God. If you want to meditate, meditate upon the Word of God, but that'll give you meaning for life. That'll show you the right way. That'll help you, brother, with the problems you have in your life. It'll help you when you meditate upon the Word of God. The Bible said, He'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also shall not wither. Praise God. That's a man who meditates in the Word of God. So if you're looking for an answer to the search of your life, you'll find the meaning of life when you find Jesus Christ. And so a lot of folks are searching the wrong way, aren't they? They sure are. The Bible says in the book of John, he said, Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life in his, through his name. Through believing in Jesus, receiving Christ, you can have life. Isn't that a blessing? I read this little illustration about this Jewish boy. He uh, somewhere or another, he got a New Testament. You know, most Jews won't read the New Testament. It's a sad thing when they refuse the light. When you refuse the light, you know what? You accept the devil's darkness. If you refuse God's light, the only thing left is the devil's darkness. And so he began to read the New Testament. He goes to his rabbi and he said, Rabbi, I want to ask you a question. He said, uh, uh, you know, the Christians say that Jesus is the Messiah. In the New Testament, their, their uh, Messiah is Jesus Christ. He said, now I want to ask you a question. When I, he said, when I looked at uh, the life of Christ and saw that what he did, I want to ask you, if we had another Messiah to come, would he do any more than this Jesus of the Christians? The rabbi said to him, no, I don't think there'd be any difference or he'd do anything greater than what Jesus did. He said to the rabbi then, he said, then why do we not believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah? And he had no answer. And of course, beloved, there is no answer when you rule Jesus out. He is the central theme of life. He's the answer to life. He's the answer to the meaning of life. He's the answer because he's the truth. And Christ is the answer. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, sir, it sure is. Then I want to say number two, he's not only the answer to the search of life, but he's answered to the sightlessness of life. A person who doesn't have sight, who's blind. The Bible talks about it. He said, that therefore, they could not believe because the Isaiah said, uh, he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts so that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. This he said when he saw his glory. They wouldn't receive Christ. Therefore, you know what happens? A hard heart. When you don't receive the truth, you know what happens? The door closes. You close your mind on the truth. You've got a hard heart. And then, of course, you can't be healed, you can't be saved, you can't be converted. He goes on to say in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 3 and 4, but if our gospel is hid or be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. If our gospel is hid, if the good news of Jesus Christ, the good news of salvation is hid, it is hid to the lost. It's not hid to the saved. It's not, it's not hid to the believer. It's hid to those that do not believe, to the lost. In whom the God of this world, who is the God of this world? The devil, the devil, the devil. Hey, the God of this world is the devil. And that's where people are out there following the devil. They're listening to the devil. They're listening to what the devil has to say. God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Blind the minds of them that believe not. The minds of those that believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Brother, there's a lot of folks blind today, but Jesus is the answer for their blindness. He sure is. He said in the book of the Revelation, chapter 3, he said, I, he said, you don't know that you're wretched and you're miserable and you're poor and you're blind and naked? He said, I counsel thee to buy me gold, try to the fact that they might be rich. The gold he gives you, you make you rich. Oh, brother, we can get a lot of money down here or not have too much either one, but you know what? People are seeking for riches down here, possessions down here, but you know they're all going to pass away. And when you die, you know what? They're not going to pack them on that hearse and take them down to the graveyard neither. In fact, they tell me if, the, if they put a suit on you from the, you know, the morgue that uh, that's not going to have any, um, or the funeral home, I don't guess that's a morgue, but anyway, uh, that's not going to have any pockets in it unless they put your suit on you. Hey, brother, listen, you better get the riches that last forever, the riches that God gives, the real gold that God gives. He said, I count thee, uh, buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, thou mayest be clothed. You need the righteousness of Christ on you because you don't want to stand naked before him. He said, behold, I come quickly, blessed to he that watches and keeps his garment, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Who wants to walk naked and the world see his shame? Hey, hey, not me, brother. I want to be clothed in his righteousness, don't you? And he says, and not thine eyes with thy sight that thou mayest see. 
Hey, brother, get the eyesight for the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, and you can see. And so you know what? He's the answer to the sightless of men. They can't see. They're blind, and they need Jesus. He's the answer. He's the answer. Brother, when you come to him, your eyes are fly open. You begin to see like you've never seen before. And that's what happened to me as a young 13-year-old boy when I got saved by the wonderful grace of God. I began to see things I'd never seen before. Hey, brother, I want to tell you there's a God in heaven and he wants to give you something that will help you and bless you and that is Jesus Christ. He sent him in this world that you could have life through his blessed name. I want to say number three, Christ is the answer. For the search of life. He's the answer for the sightlessness of men. He is the answer for your speculation. You know, there's a lot of folks that speculating today. And there's talking a little bit about in our Sunday school class today what men say this, that, and the other, and there's always speculation. And they're speculating about evolution. Well, hey, brother, don't you believe that dirty devil's lie? That's a lie straight out of the devil's mouth and right out of hell, and don't you believe it? And they're teaching that in your colleges and teaching that in your schools. And they teach it just like it's a fact. It's a dirty devil's lie. And they bought the devil's lie. They've closed their mind on the truth. And they've taken the darkness of the devil. Their hearts are hardened by sin. And so, uh, you know, here they are. They are speculating. No words. A speculate means to ponder. It means to think about in various aspects of a given subject. And so they're, instead of taking the truth of the word of God, they won't even pick up the Bible. They don't even believe it's the word of God. And, of course, they're trying to change the Word of God. That's what the devil does. He tries to change it, and he tries to do everything he can to destroy the power of the Word of God, but he'll never get it done because there's a copy up in heaven, and praise God, we got a copy of it. Amen? Yes, sir. And so there is that uh, a speculation about uh, you know, where we came from, a speculation about the Bible. Men say, well, it's a Word of men. No, it's a Word of God. Holy men wrote as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They were moved by the power of God. God took their finger and, brother, they were.